How's it going, Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how to test a riding lawnmower safety switch. So let's get right into it. So you open up your garage and you're right ready to cut your grass. You put your foot on the brake, you turn the key and nothing happens. Chances are you have a bad brake safety switch on your riding lawnmower. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test one of these riding lawnmower safety switches. And for the purpose of this video, I just have a used wiring harness out of a riding mower that I ended up scrapping out. It also has a couple safety switches here. One is most likely for the mower deck engagement. And this one here is for the brake switch. They just screw into the frame. So we'll go ahead and unplug this. We can go ahead and look at where we're going to be doing our test. So what we're going to be doing is taking a multimeter and we're going to be connecting it on this side. And then we're going to be connecting it on that side as well. And what we're going to be doing is testing for continuity. That just checks to make sure there's a connection between the two terminals. So I have just a little amp meter here, and this also doubles as a continuity tester. And you guys can see that little symbol there. That means for sound. So what I've done here is set up my leads to a simple screwdriver. And when the leads connect, you get a noise. Hear that? So before we go ahead and test this switch, we have to understand how they work. And this switch is simply a circuit breaker. So these switches are either designed to be engaged or disengaged. And depending on how they're hooked up and how they're wired, then it can either mean that when they are engaged, it is acting as a circuit breaker, or when it is disengaged, it is acting as a circuit breaker. Depending on which way this safety switch is hooked up and plugged into that connector, will determine whether it's acting as a circuit breaker when it's depressed or when it's out. So the way to test this switch is super simple. You're going to have continuity between one set of terminal connectors, and you're going to have no continuity on the other side when it is in the disengaged position. When this switch is in the engaged position, you should see the opposite. You should see no continuity on one side and continuity on the other. And this is a simple test that we can do with my multimeter. I do have the ones with the little alligator clips here and it does make sound so you will hear it. It doesn't matter which is negative or positive because we're doing a simple continuity test. And we're gonna make sure we have a good connection and then we're gonna come up to the top one and we're just gonna touch it and see if we have sound. Hear that? So that side of terminals here has continuity when it's in the disengaged position, which means if we come over to the right side here, we should not hear any sound as we shouldn't have any continuity. Hear that? So there is no continuity on that side. Now, if I depress this switch while keeping my connectors hooked up, we should hear a noise. Hear that? So. Once again, we'll go back to the other side, and because I know this is a good switch, we should hear noise here, but when I depress this, we shouldn't hear any noise. So it's a very simple test. It's something that you could do within a couple of minutes, but sometimes removing these switches can be a pain in the butt because the manufacturers sometimes position these in really hard to reach areas, and I'll show you how you can bypass the step of even having to test one of these. And don't forget to shut off your multimeter so you don't drain that battery. So like I said, sometimes these switches can be in hard to reach areas. So I'm gonna show you how you can basically test that switch by bypassing it all together using a simple little wire. This is known as a jumper wire. And I use these only for the purpose of testing a switch. You never wanna leave these in and bypass the switch altogether, guys, because doing that would be dangerous. You never wanna run a machine with one of these installed. But for the purpose of testing, let's say this was bolted up underneath a frame rail and it was really hard to get at without removing a whole bunch of stuff. What you do is you take your jumper wire and you simply jump the connection on the plug itself. So again, all you have to do now is unplug the wiring harness and now you can slip this up under the frame, install your jumper cable, and all you're doing is mimicking that switch either being engaged or disengaged. So let's say it's something as simple as a faulty or defective brake switch. What you're gonna do is place your jumper cable into the connector, like so, and you're gonna go ahead and turn your key. And if your mower doesn't start, 
go ahead and move that jumper cable to the other side. Now with your jumper cable installed to the other side, go ahead and turn your key on your riding mower again. And if your riding mower turns over with that jumper cable installed, then you go ahead and plug in your switch again and it doesn't work, then you know that you have a faulty or defective brake safety switch because you've essentially bypassed that safety switch using a jumper cable. And then what you can do is go ahead and spend the time to remove the safety switch, replace it, and then you should be ready to cut grass again. Because I do this professionally and it's a business, I can't go ahead and cut my customer's wires and jump any safety switches because there are safety concerns regarding bypassing safety switches. Obviously, they're there to protect you, but if you guys wanted to go ahead and disconnect your safety switches, it's fairly simple, especially when it's one of those four terminal plugs. All you have to do is find out which ones are supposed to have continuity and which ones are not supposed to have continuity when the switch is either engaged or disengaged. And then you could go ahead and hook up those corresponding wires just by simply cutting them and putting them together using a butt connector. So on this riding lawnmower that I have in front of me, not only is there a safety switch on the brake lever, but there's also a safety switch on the blade engage handle. So if I were to put my foot on the brake and then go ahead and put the blade into the engage position, if I go down to where the key is at and I try to start this machine, it will not turn over. And that's because the safety switch here is acting as a circuit breaker. So with your defective safety switch replaced, when you go ahead to turn your key now, your engine should turn over. <laughs> And before you know it, you'll be back to cutting grass in no time. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Very quick and very simple. And like I said, if you can't remove that safety switch because it's in a hard to reach area, you can go ahead and use that jumper cable. It is an effective way of testing the switch by bypassing it altogether. If your riding mower starts up with the connector jumped, but when you plug in the switch and it doesn't start, then you know that you have a defective safety switch. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.